last season on Timeless, where we ended things was uh, the culmination of you've been learning about Lucy and the mythology of Rittenhouse, who has become who has become kind of this. Uh, like we're not really sure who they are, but it's very they seem very politically minded and kind of wanting to create the future of America and of the world as they see fit. And so they've become our bad guys on the show. And we've been following Flynn through time. And where we leave off is that you find out that Lucy, who is our illustrious historian, um, is actually not only the daughter of a man who is in Rittenhouse, but her mother is like the lead villain of Rittenhouse. Like her mother is Rittenhouse incarnate. Um, not devil incarnate, but Rittenhouse incarnate. So Lucy is pure blood Rittenhouse, which is was a really big surprise twist. Um, and where things left off is that Wyatt hadn't gotten his wife back. Um, Rufus and Gia had started up a romance and uh, he and Mason were kind of at odds and then um, what was gonna happen next for Lucy now that she has this information was Rittenhouse going to steal her away or uh, try and get her to become a part of Rittenhouse or was she gonna be able to stay part of Time Team? Well, the, the basic premise of the show is that, uh, you know, what if time travel were real? And we have a character named Mason who owns Mason Industries and he has created uh, a time machine that works. And what the government uh, has done once they've discovered that time travel is real is that they've taken it over and put together a team of a historian, a scientist, and a soldier to go back in time following our bad guy, Flynn, who seems to be trying to change things in the past. And so our team is to, supposed to preserve history as we know it. But as we go along, we find out that things aren't what they seem and that Flynn may or may not be bad and that the, the real evil is this organization called Rittenhouse and we have to go back and try and stop them from really catastrophically changing our future. Yeah, so I play Lucy, who is the historian on the show and the daughter of a very famous historian. And she's kind of like the ultimate fangirl historian. Like for her, celebrities are people from the past, from Abraham Lincoln to Josephine Baker to Ian Fleming to Bonnie and Clyde. So she's kind of uh, your biggest fangirl possible getting to meet her heroes up close and personal. And then as we get to know them and she gets to personalize them and humanize them, kind of see her reaction if, if we like who they are or if she wishes that they would just stay historical figures in the past. Um, so I think she's kind of our way in because uh, it's a dream come true for her. You know, it's like all of her dreams are coming true, but it's in this really odd kind of puzzle because now she's forced to go back and meet them to try and save the world. I'm so much smarter since I started shooting the show. Uh, Lucy, playing Lucy makes me seem so much smarter than I actually am, which has been great. Uh, it's been really interesting because I do, every, every episode is a, a history lesson. I've learned about facets of history I didn't know existed. And one of, the, one of my favorite things about the show is that we actually explore history through the things that you really haven't heard of. Um, like a moment in time that really shifted the future. Like for example, this season we, we have an episode about Robert Johnson, who actually was the godfather of rock and roll. But we kind of think rock and roll started in the 50s, you know, with the, the Beatles or with, you know, going into the Stones, but he was actually in the 30s. And, and he recorded this one album that really shaped and affected, you know, rock and roll as we know today. So that's what I like about the show is that we kind of go back to this other thing that you didn't know about something that we know about, but it's kind of this you can, unique and individual thing that we, that we explore. My favorite part about playing Lucy is uh, the costumes, hair, and makeup. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's uh, my mother made all my clothes growing up, and I definitely was uh, had an active imagination and was playing a lot of different characters. So to actually be able to infuse all of those childhood fantasies and dreams, and also the fact that I get to help to you know I work very closely with our costume designer Marion Cheo, who is brilliant and we get to kind of have this creation of this character from week to week and work very closely with Debbie Zoller, our makeup artist this season, and Jeannie Durnslet, who does my hair. And just to kind of create from the ground up, a, like a 
uh, a Lucy doll every week, and uh, that's really fun. It's very satisfying. Well, you, so our team, our time team, if you will, is uh, Lucy, Wyatt, and Rufus, our historian, soldier, and scientist, who have kind of like this happenstance, you know, kind of ragtag, you know, time travel, you know, preserve history team. But as things have gone along, we have uh, Flynn, who was our bad guy, but now has moved in with us into our se super secret silo um, because Mason Industries is no longer. And so now Mason and Agent Christopher and Flynn and, uh, and our time team and Gia, who is our techie, we all, we all live together <laughs> and we're all like kind of tasked with um, this new mission this season, which is because Flynn is no longer our our bad guy per se, um, or we're not sure, is that um, that Rittenhouse has dropped sleeper agents in every episode, and who, people who have been living amongst people, pe you know, they, they drop these agents who are from present day, drop them in the past, and they basically like live and maybe have families or lives, and they've dropped them in all these different areas, and we have to go back and try and stop them, or find out what they're trying to do so we can hopefully save lives and, and not change the future too drastically. There's been a really good working relationship between Wyatt and Lucia, kind of I hate you, I love you, I love you, I hate you kind of relationship. And then last season in Bonnie and Clyde, they were undercover as kind of their, you know, Lucy and Wyatt, these, you know, uh, these thieves on the run. And when they meet Bonnie and Clyde, they're, they're basically, they have to keep their cover up and they share their first kiss and it definitely kind of sparked something with both of them. But Wyatt has been looking for his wife. I mean, Wyatt's wife died um, well before season one and all of season one he was really trying to find her. But now that we've kind of come into season two and Lucy had a fiance she never met and, mm. and her sister is still uh, gone. So I think through their brokenness they've kind of you know started to become closer and heal each other and you're gonna explore that romance this season. Um, but then there's a twist. You know, I don't know how we do it every episode, but we, we do. We go back to a different time period every single episode and have all new actors, all new sets, all new costumes. And it really is, I would, you know, ar arguably the toughest show on television to make. And I'm always amazed how we do it and do it with such artistry and beauty. But this season, um, in episode one, we're going back to World War I. Uh, in the first episode, and then we're gonna, and we meet Irene Curie, Irene and Marie Curie, and, um, and then in episode two, we go back to the 1950s to NASCAR. Um, the NASCAR kind of, there's a, a, a race that takes place in South Carolina with this race car driver named Ryan Millerson, but we actually meet really the first and one of the most famous African-American race car drivers, Wendell Pierce, so we get to know him and go on a a cool ride with him, literally and figuratively. And then episode three, we go to the 1940s and actually to the Paramount lot, which we're shooting on this year. And we have a behind the scenes, like old Hollywood episode and meet William Randolph Hearst and Hattie Lamar. And they kind of uh, guide us through the things that we need to know to try and stop Rittenhouse. And, you know, I lo I lo it's like all, like we're all in the studios and behind in the costumes. And the cool thing about that episode is actually the, we get to go to a party at Hearst, uh, Beverly Hills house, and, and the dress that we made for Lucy is almost an exact replica of Katharine Hepburn's dress in Philadelphia Story. So it's kind of like she stole that one from the co costume shop and wore it to the party, which is a huge dream of mine. I mean, Katharine Hepburn is like my idol and definitely a huge inspiration for the character of Lucy. So Marianne Cheo and her like, you know, team of incredible costume elves. <laughs> Worked round the clock to make this really, I, what I think it will be an iconic and historic dress. Um, I really love my cast. I think, you know, what we are tasked with is really, really difficult. And uh, Malcolm Barrett and Matt Lanter and I work really well together. And Gordon Vichnich, uh, that's how you say it, Vichnich, he uh, taught me. <laughs> um, and Sakina Jaffe and... Claudia Dalmeet and Patterson Joseph. We, we all work really well together, so I think uh, the days could be very laborious if we weren't you know, such good compadres on this journey. Um, but yeah, I love, I think you know, in the hindsight from, you know, in hindsight from season one, what I've loved 
is that so many young women watch the show. You know, I'm, I'm a mother, I have a nine-year-old uh, little boy, and so when I take him to school, all the little girls are like, are you Lucy? And I just love that we are able to tell a story about a woman who leads with her brain, that is super smart, that is a professor, and she's kind of becoming a superhero for, for young girls. I think that's one of my favorite things, and that we're a family show. You know, so many families sit together, watch the show. I get stopped by eight-year-olds. I get stopped by 80-year-olds sometimes at the same moment. <laughs> and then that's been a, like a great, um, I guess just a great chapter in my career because I haven't really been on anything that was super family-oriented. And I love that it's really the only scripted show on, it's, it's really the only scripted show on primetime that truly the whole family can sit down and watch together and everybody learns something, everybody's entertained. And uh, I love that about the show. It's an incredible feeling to be back for season two. I mean, particularly because of how it happened and how the fans really brought us back. Um, you know, to know that we have such a passionate fan base uh, and that they went out and made themselves heard so loud that it changed the course of history and uh, uncanceled a canceled show is, um, it's incredible. And um, I feel special to be a part of it. <laughs> and um, it's just cool. And I hope the fans, no, I know the fans are gonna be happy with this coming up season. So at the end of last season, we left off with Flynn was more or less set up. We don't know exactly how, but Flynn's in jail now. Um, at the, at the very end, we, you know, we thought things were good with the time team. We are about to hop into the time machine, uh, the lifeboat, to go find Amy and try to finally bring her back after you know, 16 episodes of not knowing where she is. Um, you pick this season up with a direct cut into that moment. Uh, Wyatt and Rufus are there getting the lifeboat ready, waiting on Lucy. She doesn't come. And um, uh, I give her a call. We see her phone ringing, and she's not with her phone. Something's happened to Lucy, and uh, Lucy's gone. And that's how it starts. There's a huge explosion that happens, and, uh, and then we cut six weeks later. Um, you know, the time team is trying to figure out how to get Lucy back. Uh, we're living in new digs. <laughs> we're in a new, a new place. Mason Industries is gone, and, uh, and, and Lucy's gone. So that's where we pick it up, and uh, that's where we start season two. Timeless is a historical action adventure. I mean, more than anything, it's, it's, it's an adventure show. Uh, more than a sci-fi show, it's an adventure show. It's a good time. It's something that families can watch. It's something that you can learn from. Um, it's something, I mean, me just, I, I'm a huge fan of the show as well. I mean, I get to watch every episode or read every episode and, and, and learn about these historical figures I had nothing, you know, I had no idea about. People that changed the course of history that previously we didn't have a whole lot of knowledge or at least you know, uh, the common person wouldn't really have the knowledge. Um, we go, uh, uh, just from what we've shot already in season two, we, we find Wendell Scott, who is a, a, a extremely talented racer back in the 50s, African-American guy. We don't know a whole lot about him. Um, some people do, you can, you can Google him, but there's not that much out there. And um, I mean, he changed uh, and helped create what we know as NASCAR today. Um, let's see, who else, uh, Marie Curie. Um, invented the uh, x-ray machine. Uh, we uh, just continue to bring that fun historical action adventure. It feels like a movie every episode. You know, that hasn't stopped. I think people can expect more of the same um, cinematic, beautiful um, excitement that we saw in season one. So I play Wyatt Logan. He's a uh, master sergeant, uh, U.S. Army Special Forces. Uh, he was brought on to the team at the beginning of last year to more or less keep the team safe and um, tactically figure out how to accomplish these missions. You know, of course, we all had our own piece to the puzzle. We have a historian, a soldier, and a scientist who can fly the machine. Uh, I, throughout the course of last season, obviously, all the characters bonded in a certain way that they're, they're family now. And, um, and uh, you know, when, when someone's picking on your family, you, you go after them. And uh, at the end of last season, we're in a spot with Wyatt where he's starting to let go of things that ha have been bothering him for the last five, six years with his wife. His wife passed away. 
and that's something that's been affecting him. He's been holding on to it and can't, he just can't let it go. I think that's also what makes Wyatt a great soldier because he has a tendency to be a little reckless because of he doesn't have a whole lot to live for. But when Lucy comes around and you start to see this bond between Wyatt and Lucy, things change for Wyatt a little bit. And um, I think he is more open to a relationship and, and just opening himself up. And at the end of the last, uh, end of last season, you kind of see him say, uh, you know, maybe I should be open to possibilities of, of things. Obviously, he's implying a romance with Lucy. That's kind of where it's left off. So I think those two characters see a possibility to, to be with each other and just to find love and, and, and comfort and solace with each other that uh, in this wacky world that they're in, uh, they don't have. So all of that is ripped away. <laughs> at the beginning of season one when uh, she's, she's taken. And so we open with Wyatt in a place, pretty dark place, where for six weeks he's been obsessing over what's happening to Lucy. What's she, you know, is she alive, is she dead? He's holding out hope that she is alive. Um, and, uh, and then of course, a few episodes in, we have Wyatt's wife back, which throws a small wrench in things. Yeah, I think it's such a, uh, carefully selected team of three individuals um, that have to come together and figure out how to work together. Wyatt knows how to work with other highly talented and tactical people to accomplish his missions on the battlefield. It's a whole different thing when you've got a scientist and a historian that don't really know what they're doing as far as accomplishing a, a mission and keeping themselves safe. We saw Wyatt struggle with that last year. How do I keep them safe and look out for myself you know, Wyatt's used to having the guy looking over his left shoulder and a guy looking over his right shoulder. It works as a team. That's what he's used to. So to have a team that he feels like he needs to hold up the whole time, it's a lot of pressure on Wyatt. Um, I think that all these characters have, are, are in such a unique situation that, you know, in real life, when you go through something with, with somebody else, um, you can't help but to have a bond with that person because only that person really knows your experiences. And so only these other two characters know what Wyatt has been through can't help but to bond with them um, and you know like they, they are family and I think for Wyatt particularly he doesn't really have a family um, you know and so like I mentioned his wife has been gone for years we don't know a whole lot about uh, well we actually do this season we get a little information about his dad his dad was kind of a schmuck not in the picture and um, I think he's gravitated to these people as his family and, and the people that he really cares about I think it's opened a whole thing for Wyatt. I think he's allowed himself to care about individuals, which in the last six years, he's probably shut himself off completely to anybody in that regard. It's an hour long of fun. It's exciting and it's, it's an action adventure. If you like Jurassic Park, if you like Indiana Jones, if you like, you know, these historical adventure shows, you're going to love Timeless. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I follow a lot of um, time travel shows I did as a kid. I, I was a comic book kid. I was, a, I, I was in the Quantum Leap and into uh, Doctor Who Still Am um, and all these things. And so what's different about this is that a lot of them went through different um, time periods in history, but we really attack events and specific moments in people's lives historically, and we really try and fixate on that, you know, whether it be... Um, you know, the, the murder house or, or NASA and, and Kathleen Johnson and, and that. We really like to fixate on a particular time period and really bring that to you and make it as real as possible. Um, and not just meet a character or meet a Houdini, but like actually meet them and see what the situation is and try and follow what their world was. And I think in that way, we're, we're very unique, you know, because we have to do our history. We don't just take somebody and pluck them out of a situation. We keep that situation and try to develop around it. There is a lot of adventure on this show. One of the fun aspects of this is how much we're able to take history and, and blow it up, uh, literally and figuratively. Um, Rufus kicks a lot more butt this season. He's putting paws on dudes uh, this year. I, uh, you know, I kick somebody at the Salem Witch Trial. I have a whole fight scene in, the, in World War II in France. You know, we are going through all these things. I think we kind of opened with a bang, uh, literally. I have this cool fight scene on my camera. You can't see. You know what? Play the, play the fight footage. We're doing, I don't know how this works. So. 
It's good. It's good. Um, we have a lot of car chases. Um, you know, and I think that's what makes history fun on this show is that between the Marie Curies and the Wendell Scott is a bunch of car chases and gunfights and, and butt kicking. And that's what we're about. Well, it, it's interesting. I think, you know, I think a lot of the time team is it's built on the three of us and, and our relationship. And I think we have a really good rapport and make each other laugh. Um, I think as characters, they've definitely grown with each other and away from each other at the same time. So I think there's definitely more, you, you get the rapport that we have, you get the history that we have, um, so to speak, um, with these three characters. And I think they're tested. They're forced to rely on each other in different ways. We do get split up and brought together. And I think, you know, I think we're allowing each other a little bit more breathing room. And at the same time, we're still on each other's tails. We still, you know, are, are beat by beat. We still have a rhythm with each other. And I think that's sort of the different aspect of it is there's a lot more trust with the team, which I think allows us to take things a lot further. One of the things that first attracted me to this script was dealing with history in a real sense, um, be it the racism, the sexism, particularly for me. You know, a lot, I, the first episode gets quoted a lot um, when they get, uh, Wyatt Logan just walked by. Um, the first episode gets quoted a lot um, with my speech in a jail talking about um, how history will change, particularly for black people. And I think this show does a really good job of walking that line and being very subtle about how we deal with race and sex and at the same time not trying to whitewash it. You know, that was, that for me is one of the most frustrating things as a viewer, particularly as an African American viewer of historical pieces, is how much things are whitewashed, is how much I have to go like, Oh yeah, that wouldn't happen because I'm black. <laughs> like, oh, like you know, that would have <laughs> the same thing would happen for a lot of the time travel shows where I would go like, oh, like I would have a completely different experience than that. You know, like black people, we don't like to go back before Thriller. Like before that, it was like we don't have a fighting chance. Uh, and so, um, you know, this was a great way to really deal with it and and be smart about it. You know, and the writers are really good about listening. You know, we've debated certain moments and we've asked each other questions and they come out of an organic way of doing things as opposed to, as opposed to trying to ram it down people's throats and at the same time as opposed to like acting like this wouldn't happen at all. I think we're very smart about it. You know, I've heard very little complaints um, about how we deal with it because I think we're, we're, we're very smart. You know, this year, you know, we deal with Wendell Scott in, in the NASCAR races in the, in the 50s in the South. Um, and so it's a very subtle line to be able to bring that to the forefront without, um, and, and have people listen. And I think we're able to do it in a way where people listen, and it's been one of the greatest, most rewarding aspects of doing this show. Um, look, this is why you watch Timeless. There's gunfights, we're kicking butt, we're learning about history you've never learned about. You see a black guy going through time and dealing with stuff? Like, I ain't never seen that. I've been watching TV for years. Uh, so I think all of that is like amazing. And there's like cool special effects. I think if you're like, you know, if you're one of these geeks that grew up on Spielberg movies and, and Quantum Leap and, and all these like sort of time travel, the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, there's so many fun references to all these things and, and so much fun that the characters are, are having that I think, you know, you'll have no choice but to watch. <laughs> all right. This show is fun, it's adventurous, and it's action packed. You can't beat that. It's very exciting to be back, especially after the news we're not coming back. <laughs> and our, our fans brought us back, so that was, that was, that was pretty awesome. So now we're, we're in the middle of it. Oh my God, we're, we're shooting uh, exactly episode five today out of 10. So uh, I don't know how much I can tell you about what's happening with Flynn, but we, uh, we find him in the prison in the beginning of the season. And then uh, there's uh, development um, after that. Uh, needless to say, he's going to find a way to get out of there, probably, hopefully. <laughs> and then, um, and then it, it gets really interesting. Yeah, so uh, the beginning of this season, you know, we, we find uh, interesting development because uh, we think on the end of the season one that Rittenhouse is pretty much over, uh, Flynn ends up in prison. Uh, what we feel about that, it's kind of like, you know, some people like it, some people don't. You know, Flynn definitely feels he's been cheated on. And uh, so his uh, main objective is to get out of there and continue with his work. Now, uh, they are going to 
our time team and Flynn are going to be kind of aligning uh, almost on the same trajectory. And uh, maybe they can even start working together. We'll see. You know, Flynn's going to still continue working his way. You know, like uh, he... He doesn't know how to not use carpet bombing. You know, it's kind of like uh, not very gentle. And but objective is still the same. So uh, that's going to be very interesting. And then uh, with Rittenhouse, uh, many surprises are waiting for us. We think that we uh, we cut them off, but uh, we maybe even just provoked them and made them even more dangerous. You know, so uh, it's interesting. Interesting stuff coming up in season two. Well, interesting thing about Flynn in this season is that uh, we see more of his uh, uh, dilemmas kind of come through. And uh, he starts, in season one, we see him a lot talking about this journal, but he doesn't believe 100% what's in there because, you know, he's an intelligent guy enough that he knows that history is changing. We're able to change it, and God knows is the journal really correct or not. And now he sees more and more of that that actually is coming to uh, that that that's that's truth, and uh, he kind of becomes almost a little bit calmer in a way, and he kind of starts working, thinking about working more with them to to get to the same point, to the same thing that they want to do. So it, it is going to be a little bit different for him, you know. Uh, are you going to call him, you know, more of a good guy or not, you know? But uh, I always consider him a good guy. <laughs> Well, the beauty of it, I love, I love in our concept, one of my favorite things about our concept is that we are the people who are in the past, who travel, they're the only ones who are keeping these memories of the original timeline. I mean, it's not even fair to call it original because it's changed, it doesn't exist anymore, except to these couple of people, they went back to the past. So original, not original, it's kind of confused uh, concept. But the fact is that we are the one that audience can basically be on the same level with us because audience is living our history. So every time we changed it, uh, we actually tell our history is the same history of our audience. And then audience with us is experiencing the change that happened. So that's my, one of my favorite things about this show. I've, since I was a kid, I've been, I've been a huge history buff. Uh, I love science fiction. When, when I was a kid, uh, I started, when I was able to read, uh, started reading first fairy tales, you know, and then I gradually kind of went into like old Greek mythology and Roman and Nordic and all that stuff, and then slowly get into science fiction and all of that. And history was always uh, kind of important and uh, interesting. And I've read a lot of those what if books, you know, it's like, you know, favorite subject is Nazi Germany. What would happen if, you know, something changed, some small thing during the Second World War, you know, in which, which world we would live today. And there's a lot of these thought experiments that we're kind of like playing with in the show, and that's one of my favorite things. And the uh, beauty of it is that we have the, the historian on a show. I mean, I don't mean Lucy. I mean the real historian in a writing room, that they always come up with these small, tiny pieces of history that you cannot learn in, in, in history books or in, uh, in a classroom because it would just be too big. And there are these tiny little details that, that, that you just didn't know, and then you go and check it, and it's correct. It's something that actually did happen. And in every episode, we have something like that. And every time I read the new episode, I'm like, okay, what I'm going to find out, something I didn't know before. And it's really cool. I think, I think people like that stuff. I mean, it's just exciting that we got a second season because we originally got cancelled and then two days later we got the call and they were like, season two, we got picked up. So that was a whirlwind <laughs> of like 48 hours. Um, but no, it's, it's insane that we're back. We're all happy to be back. We love working with each other, so it's just easy. And um, we get to shoot in LA now, so we love it. And I mean, plot-wise, it's getting interesting. Um, Um, so Gia on the show is um, in charge of, she, she's like another engineer like Rufus, but um, she does not know how to operate the lifeboat. But last season we got to see a glimpse of her training for, to be a lifeboat pilot. So um, 
her girls or anything like that. <laughs> but um, we, we got to see her training to be a pilot, uh, so potentially they could eventually explore that. Um, but really, she's on the other end. She's the other side of communication when they travel back in time. She is their contact. She is their lifeline, basically. Um, and... I mean, season one is different to season two because season one, it's about um, like a ragtag group, a trio put together, a historian, a soldier, and a, an engineer. Um, and they have to go back in time to save the future, basically, to stop things happening um, in these moments in time, in these, these massive historical events, to save the future as we know it, the present as we know it, and the future. Um, and they have a, they all have a common enemy in season one, and that's Garcia Flynn, that's, that's the common enemy. Um, but season two, Flynn is on our side now, and it's Rittenhouse. It's a much bigger threat. It's something that, it's not just one man, it's not just one face of a villain, it's an entire, community, an entire organization, and you don't know who's in it, so. <gasps> no, but every episode is, an, is a new experience, is a new journey, is a new exciting thing, and you don't know what's gonna happen, and um, every episode is dangerous, and there is a new threat, and there is, there's always something crazy happening every episode, and it's, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Well, it's kind of cool because our situation has changed so drastically that the uh, Mason Industries has actually blown up. It's gone. And what we, what I, Agent Christopher, decided we would do to keep everybody safe is move into an underground bunker that nobody knows about. So that creates all kinds of problems for us only because nobody wants to be there. I don't want to be there, but goodness knows the time team, the rest of the time team is sick and, you know, just feels incarcerated, feels all kinds of pressure. Um, Wyatt has reasons to get out, to maybe find his wife, and um, nobody's happy to be under these circumstances, uh, living under these circumstances. Um, but it kind of, what happens is that the close, the close proximity to each other breeds a kind of familiarity, and we just get to know each other and relationships sort of form. And I think as the, well, I was uh, in charge of taking care of everybody, but it takes on a different element because she, be Agent Christopher, who's a little stiff to begin with, just becomes more of a mother figure in her, you know, sort of badass way, but not like all touchy-feely, but it's interesting that what happens with my character as it relates to everybody else. We pick up this season where the threat and the real enemy is no longer Flynn, but it's actually Lucy's mom, which is pretty terrifying. Um, I think teenage girls have issues with their mother, but to be in your 30s and have a mother who maybe is going to kill you is uh, not a threat you want to live with, and it's certainly not a comfortable situation for Lucy. Flynn last year was both uh, the real enemy, but I know audiences love that character. He's one of those um, a character you love to hate, but... Uh, Believe it or not, he actually ends up in the bunker with, with us this season, which does not please Wyatt and Rufus. Nobody trusts him. Um, but, you know, the book did say that they would end up working together, wow. that Lucy and Flynn would end up working together, and that kind of happens. So last year we had a more sort of dissipated uh, uh, organization, uh, government organization who was in charge. This year I'm kind of the face of the government. And what I say goes in terms of every, protecting everybody and what the missions are. So Agent Christopher actually is one of the characters who goes back and forth. She goes out, she's covering, she brings groceries in. So, you know, she's kind of taking care of their emotional needs while taking care of their emotional needs while instructing them to go out and fight <laughs> the enemy. So it's a kind of funny role, um, funny in that uh, it's not clear cut just mothering them. But, you know, we have a job to do, which is to destroy Rittenhouse. And basically, I think at the end of last season, we think perhaps most of Rittenhouse is gone. But it's Agent Christopher's job to say, look, we don't know when they're going to pop up, who they are. And then this year, I think one of the most fascinating aspects of our show is that we've discovered that Rittenhouse 
had sleeper cells. And sleeper cells meant they went back in time and planted people in history so that they would grow up, they would not be uh, visible to people around them as dangerous people. And they grew up and they gained power. And then as powerful people, they changed history. So it's actually way more nefarious than it was last year because that's scary to know that people have been planted and are going to come over, take over the world so that Rittenhouse can actually have the control that they want. We get to really dive into a time period in every single episode. And what I love about the show is that invariably we go back to a period in history that we know about, and we've read about it in books, we've learned about it in schools, but we'll always learn some new crazy fact, like last year, oh, the Lone Ranger was a black man. Or this year you learn about Madame Curie and her, her daughter and uh, the, how they actually uh, help create this x-ray machine and what, you know, just how fierce these women are. And the show does an excellent job on um, highlighting women who did amazing things in history, certainly different ethnic minorities who did amazing things, certainly black people who did amazing things in history. So it's one of my favorite aspects of the show, actually. Timeless is a show about three people who've been chosen to go back in time to destroy an evil organization that is trying to ruin our future by destroying our past. So all the institutions that we had put in place which make America the great country that it is are being destroyed at the root. Brilliant. It's great to be back. Um, it's exciting to be able to finish the story, or at least carry it on, because there's a lot of cliffhangers that were left from the last uh, season. Uh, so it's brilliant to be back and also to be in Los Angeles. Wonderful as Vancouver was, Los Angeles is extraordinary. The story last uh, season really uh, was about the end of Rittenhouse, or so we thought. And they came back with a bang, uh, and uh, literally. Um, we are basically all huddled together in a bunker, which you'd think would be a nightmare, and, and it is because it's a bunch of disparate, very different people all stuck together and it's very intense and uh, uh, this next season is going to be very interesting to see how all the characters and their relationships play out. Well, Mason um, is just a super confident, kind of arrogant, really, man who is a billionaire, very powerful and smart. Um, and throughout uh, the first season, really, he was trying to manipulate everything he possibly could to take Rittenhouse out. And uh, seemed a bit of a villainous kind of character, but of course we find out that he was playing the long game. Whereas in this season, he's pretty much a broken man. He's lost everything. He's uh, lost his reputation and his, his, uh, his fortune. So there's really nothing of the old Mason that's left. So this se season, I suppose, is about rebuilding him anew from scratch, which I'm very f I'm interested in, in how we're going to go and, and go about doing that. Yeah, I'm slightly torn about what's happening with uh, Garcia Flynn in this season because I have always admired Goran as an actor and I was desperate to work with him. So the fact that in this season, though he is still uh, a suspicious character, he comes into the fold, as it were, is, is exciting for me as an actor because I may get to work with him. But great for the group as well because Flynn has a very particular has a very particular way of seeing the world I and mean, it's very different to everybody else in the show. So it's great to have him as a sort of catalyst change the sort of DNA of our little group. So I can't wait to do more work with him too. Timeless, I think in a nutshell, Timeless really is about exploring areas of history that we think we know, but we'll find a different angle on. I mean, I think of a couple of uh, episodes, certainly the Lone Ranger episode, I mean, I was a massive fan of Lone Ranger as a kid. No idea that it was based on an African-American uh, person. Uh, and the uh, Apollo 13 mission, which was partly rescued by the wonderful uh, Katherine Johnson, the NASA scientist, so I had never heard of until we started doing our, our episode. So a Timeless really is a sort of revelation of, of uh, how history can be seen from different angles, from the female angle and from the African-American angle. Um, history is a very different place than it is for, say, a white American. So in that, I think we're kind of unique in exploring those angles. 
there's so many areas of, of uh, history that we could explore, but I think one of the, two of the, the most interesting ones so far, I mean, they're all great, but uh, is meeting Marie Curie and her daughter, Yanin, um, in 1917, during the First World War. Because, yeah, we know Marie Curie's story, generally speaking, but we don't really know the details of, of her relationship with her daughter and what it was really like for a woman in the First World War to actually be there, you know, uh, on the front line. So that's fascinating. Um, and the other episode that I loved was the 1941, uh, basically Hollywood land, Busby Berkeley type musical episode. I can't wait to see that. And of course, Abigail, who is really a musical theatre actress dressed up as a, a movie star, is going to, I don't know, she's going she's gonna to blow the screen apart, I reckon. Uh, I mean, look, if you're not into time travel shows, then you're not into time travel shows, but if you like them even a little bit, you'll love this. Because it's not only about time travel, it's about the fun the characters have with each other as they travel back in time. It's a must watch. If I had, um, if I had to say anything about it, I'd say it's the most exciting history lesson you'll ever get. <laughs>